little bit about uh, my tour this year, my hiking trip in Sweden. Um, the plan is to do a thing that's called Gröna Bandet, which is a challenge um, to find your own route along Swedish Fjell, the mountain area in Sweden, um, all the way from south, from Kröbeken to Abisko or Fredrikslöset in the north. So you take yourself about 1,500 kilometers, some say 1,300 to 100, 1,600 kilometers, all through Swedish mountains. Um, the challenge is to find your own route. You can follow a lot of local trails, but there are also hard stretches that have no trails or you're free to choose what you think is the best route and it doesn't have to be on trail all the time um, and probably the thing that one needs to know about this environment is that it's partially or for most parts it's very exposed even though those mountains aren't very high they are or you are above the tree line for most of the time and since it's this, this, all of this is quite far up north, like parts of it even beyond the Arctic Circle, it can get quite cold even during summer. And the weather can be quite extreme in regards to rain, uh, bad weather in general. A lot of wind and storms can be expected. And on top of this, you also have to fight off uh, a gigantic mass of mosquitoes usually. So these are the parameters. I think you usually say like you should be prepared to get like freezing temperatures uh, by end of August during the night. Um, I know from my own experience this happens and I also know that uh, even if it has bad weather and if you're in a storm then can expect to be hiking at around plus five degrees and uh, rain and strong winds and that's just not really nice. So you have to be prepared. It typically means you have to pack a bit warmer than you usually would during the summer in Europe. So, and that's uh, the things you should know about when to pick gear and this explains probably the gear that I will show you soon. So, Let's stay tuned. Okay, of course, Flock is also here again. This, I hope, is everything I will need. Um, I don't really know where to start. Usually I will start with this one, but it's a bit buried. That's my backpack. Um, this is another thing you can buy because I got it from someone I know from some online hiking forum, Afterlife. It's a self-made, frameless, pretty straightforward, simple backpack. I, I will take this one because it just has the right size. It's a bit bigger than the other one that I have and that's allowed me to just like be a bit more generous with what I pack and also I don't know about resupply yet and how much food I will have to carry. So I just think this this will like the, the whole the whole um, concept or philosophy behind this tool will be uh, I want to not like optimize the last gram out of it. So this time it's a bit more rela relaxed, a bit more on the safe side. I don't want to be worried to run out of resources, no matter what it is. So, like, is the backpack too small and then I can't fit all the food that I just bought. You know, I don't want to have this trouble and stress this time. So, I'll take this one. It's, I even don't know how many liters it is. I would say like 45 maybe, ish. Uh, it has really big pockets here on the left and on the right and really gigantic mesh pocket on the front. 
otherwise it's all it's to say about it. Then there is, I have um, a sitting pad or sleeping pad, that's just a super cheap one from Petema, tucked to torso lengths that I will use to sit on and just like during the day for breaks to just have a nap, but it's easy to pull out and yeah, have a good time. And then um, let's talk about the next thing. This is my sleeping pad. This is a regular, it's a Neo Air, Thermarest Neo Air X Lite in size S. That means it's also just torso length. And this, then I will use my backpack and all of this here for my feet. Then I get like a full length of insulation to sleep on. So they basically have to be combined to make my sleep setup. That's my sleeping bag. Then, I have my, oh, maybe it's a little bit in here already, but I know what I've talked about. This is my beloved sleeping bag. That's a Yeti VIB 400. I've had it for many years, I think six years or so now. And I've had it on almost all my tours except for the Pyrenees and basically like, like 2018. I didn't use it, but all the other years, I, this was my main sleeping bag, and it's good. It has a comfort temperature of plus two and limit of minus three. It, after the PCT last year, I had also had it on the PCT with me. It was quite, uh, <laughs> I would say ruined, but it was, it suffered quite a lot, but I washed it like really, really, uh, thoroughly and uh, using like some yeah, down wash, some extra, extra down wash, and then I treated it with Nick Wax down. Um, I don't know what it's called. It's for uh, keep it dry to to make it more water repellent. So I hope this will help me a little bit. Um, I think this is just the perfect bag for what I want to do. And it's, it's super fluffy still, and it's super nice, and I'm super cozy, so I'm looking forward to use it again this year. Uh, then I have this pop stick here to go with my sleeping uh, pad. Um, because, like, you know, after a long day of hiking, I really hate inflating those, those sleeping pads. And with the pop stick, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's just not really worth mentioning thing that otherwise like annoys you maybe because you're just tired you want to go to sleep and then this takes me less than a minute uh, instead of like blowing up my, my chest and also this doubles as a as my sleeping uh, not as my uh, liner for the backpack so what I will do is I will put all the things that should not get wet in here because it's, uh, this is uh, completely waterproof, so everything that shouldn't get wet, should never get wet, will be inside here, and then I put this inside of my my backpack. And then this time I will try this here, I just got it new, I've never used it before, that's a, that's a sleep, uh, uh, yeah, a pillow, an inflatable pillow, super tiny, super lightweight, I think it's 30 grams or so from, from Marmot. No, Marmot actually, yeah, not Marmot. I had sleeping uh, pillows, but it's, yeah, I'm not really a fan of them. I could do without, but this time I'm gonna give it a try again. This is my food bag, I'm not important right now. And to clip complete my big three, this is my, will be my tent. I just got it new that the Top tent notch lithium. It's uh, made from Dyneema. It was quite expensive, and that's normally not my style because normally I just try to not use gear that that makes gives the impression that being in the outdoors is only for rich people. I mean, it's nice to, to have those good things, but I want to be like, yeah. I, I, I want to show people also to demonstrate that they can have a great time outdoors even though they don't have so much money. But this time 
I thought I want to have something that I can really uh, rely on in bad weather conditions. This one will also be uh, good for winter tours that I planned. And it's just super, super lightweight. It's 600 grams and that's just so fantastic. And since I have to carry a lot anyway and I want to carry uh, camera gear and stuff and also my um, Tenkara. Like, sums up, it adds up, and uh, I thought I want to balance it. Although I ordered some other tent that would have been like just a third of the price of this one, or just a, yeah, a third. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't arrive, and it will probably not arrive before before I set out for this tour. So I'm happy to have this one here. Next things, my kitchen. I'm actually using a kitchen. Some people cold soap these days. It's not for me, I found out. So I need warm food. I need my coffee in the morning and I need something warm before I go to bed. So and then I got this one here for Christmas. That's the uh, Soto Windmaster. And I thought maybe uh, try something, something. Uh, but that's, a, that's a more lightweight and smaller pot stand to go with it. So that's a canister, that's a stove for ca gas canisters. Just screw it on top. It's very nice because I think this one is excellent in wind and it's like super efficient even in bad conditions and it, uh, it's not heavy. It's heavier than what I usually take but it's still not really heavy. It's like 70 grams or so. And what I, what I like most about it is that it's uh, super silent. And the PCT, I had to use, on the PCT, you have to use gas canister stoves because of fire regulations. I'm not a fan of them. And I chose the BS, BSR 3000T or what it's called. It's like this super tiny stove and it's fine. It works fine, but it's just so loud. It's so noisy and then imagine like, Having, I mean, that's the most popular stove these days. And then you sit in camp and everyone is having their stove and it's like next, like almost next, next to an uh, yeah, airplane starting or so and everyone's like. <laughs> so I got one that's super silent because I'm a bit, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm a, uh, yeah, I just don't like it. I want to have a quiet in my house. Around camp. Okay, so otherwise, that's a folding spoon I have here. The Turks folding spoon it doesn't really matter. They're like, I think, dozens of the same but different brand. And another luxury item that I take this time is my folding cup. Just to not be worried about tilting it over or whatever, and it's, it's gonna be nice just have like sips from this nice cup here and then this is my pot that's the Tok 700 it's a titanium pot <coughs> super lightweight and I take this one with me that's a silicon lid you can get those from Amazon <coughs> and then you can use them like this and this is basically um, yeah, seals any any water so you have in it because I want to use it to pre-soak uh, my dinner my food because I expect that red lentils will be a thing that's like widely available up there at least I know that they have it on in their cabins and uh, so red lentils uh, you better soak them for maybe an hour before you actually prepare them. Then all you have to do is just heat up the water and they are good. Otherwise you would have to boil them for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes even. And they cost a lot of gas and I don't want to carry so much gas. So pre-soaking is the thing here. Okay then, <clears throat> yeah, I will take one water bottle or maybe two of them not really a biggie because up there is so much water you never really have to worry. My clothes! No! 
this is what I'll be wearing socks, underpants, yes, underpants. I haven't worn underpants for the last few years at this time because I'll be wearing actual hiking pants. And that's mostly because uh, mosquitoes. And uh, yeah, I expect, so when weather is bad, I, I would be wearing long pants anyway for most of the time, so why not just proper pants? And these are nice, these are good, I got them from a friend. And a shirt. I, I'm still on the lookout for a good new shirt. Otherwise, I use this here, but this here I have been using for many years. If I could find something that's just of the same quality, but new, that would be nice. Otherwise, I have, it has to yeah, work another eight weeks or so for me. We will see. Then I made this thing here for rain. That's a rain coat. So this goes around your hips like this. And this I will use for rain to cover my legs instead of proper rain pants because I hate those rain pants. Um, I can't just pull them over my regular pants. That would be just way too warm. Uh, I, I'd be sweating like crazy and uh, so what happens then usually is that I have to stop, I have to add, so imagine the situation, it starts raining already, it's cold, wind, rain, um, you have waited too long because you thought maybe it's not gonna be that bad, maybe the rain isn't even coming here, or whatever you thought and was wrong, of course, uh, so now you are there, and then you have to take off your pants while the weather is really bad already, and get into your rain pants and uh, uh, then stow your pants in the, your wet pants probably already in your backpack or somewhere it's just a shit show and this thing here is so convenient you just pull it up wrap it around and there you go i've added some someone told me that's a good trick so i added some bungee cord here for the lower end to clip them together so then when wind comes it wouldn't be like blown away i hope it works it's made from Tyvek. Uh, I haven't really tried it, but I trust on it. We will see. Then I have gloves and also self-made uh, rain mittens, also from Tyvek. We will see if they work or not. It can't get worse because I have been in like really shitty situations with gloves anyway, so I'm used to have cold hands. Uh, this is my rain jacket. There's not too much to say about it. It's a hard less. Uh, this is more two, 200 grams or so. Very nice. I'm very happy with this one. It's it's the only one that somewhat keeps me dry. I have uh, like much more expensive ones that have doubled the weight and didn't keep me dry. So. So far, this has worked well, and I hope it stays like this, right? And then my insulation layer is a super cheap uh, micro grid fleece from Decathlon that I've been using for many years. I'm super happy with this one. It's also super lightweight, 200 grams, and in combination with like the rain jacket, I don't think I need more. I hope I still I don't know. Maybe I pack my puffy, my down puffy jacket, but I don't think I will. I think this will be enough. I am off. Then uh, some towel, there's just some disc for doing the dishes. It's a micro fleece or so. Uh, another pair of socks, uh, spare parts. Another pair of undies, spare parts. And that's my sleeping cloth, that's some run-down, long sleeve, merino, super comfy, I love it, and it's about sleeping well. And if it should get really, really super cold, then I can still wear it under my shirt and under the fleece. And long johns to sleep in, because I just really like this. I've learned that I really need to feel cozy, comfortable to be able to sleep, 
and I need to feel dry. And also, uh, maybe let's just, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, as far as I know then, uh, merino wool is also uh, antiseptic in a certain way. And so if you have like shavings or so between your legs, you know, those blood and so, or here and wherever they come, then typically this helps me uh, to, to uh, yeah, heal, make them heal. Otherwise, if I sleep in the clothes that I've been wearing the whole day that are sweaty and stinky and uh, that just makes things worse and typically uh, my body recovers in uh, nights wearing like wool. Maybe it's just about wearing something else, something that's dry and clean. But anyway, it helps me. I'm pretty sure it does and that's why it's part of my backpack. Then a set of maps because there will be stretches there where there are no trails or I don't want to follow trails or mostly it's about not walking on roads and I'll try to find my own route off trail through through the mountains and there I want to use actual maps because uh, route finding just on this super small smartphone screen doesn't work. I don't have GPS track to follow or anything and so on. And I'm happy to have something to do planning and to have yeah, something to work with. That's my diddy bag and that's like uh, first aid and uh, hygiene toothbrush and stuff and yeah I don't want to go through all the items here because it's just like straightforward nothing special like battery pack headlamp a knife lighter charger yeah that's more or less it and these are like nice sunglasses I'm not sure if I'll bring them. I'm not sure if they are needed, but we will see. Okay, that, that's it, I would say. Um, yeah, join me on, follow me on Instagram. I'll keep you posted. See you there.